Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I hooked up my wood stove to my water heater to get some heat from the wood stove to heat the water uh, so I don't have to run the domestic hot water heater in my house. So I just got my fire going here tonight. I let it burn down uh, since I started it this afternoon. And so you can see here is the temp of my water heater. So we're sitting at about 122, 123. And you know we just got done eating dinner, so we used hot water for that. And that's where we're sitting. And we haven't had the wood stove running here for a little while now. My wood stove hooked up to this water heater. It usually sits right around 140, sometimes a little bit higher. But we also have six people in our house. And uh, this is a 50 gallon water heater. So it takes a lot more to heat it up than a, than a 30 gallon or 40 gallon water heater. It definitely does not heat up the water as fast as the water heater does, but that's to be expected. Now, what I got going on here is I took the pressure relief valve out and put a, a nipple on right here, which you can't see because of the foam, but there's a nipple here, it comes to a T and then it comes to and then this, this uh, pressure relief valve goes in here. Now I bought a longer version of this that the thermostat goes into the tank further because obviously I, I pulled it out. So I wanted to make sure that I'm still getting the temperature inside the tank as well. Put a shutoff valve here and then on, this one's got a little bleeder here so I could bleed the line, get the air out. And we got a, another pressure relief valve. So if this valve is shut along with the valve down here, and, and I fire up the wood stove and forget to open up the valves, this guy here is gonna blow the water out if it heats. So then we got our pipe coming down here, comes into the top here. Heat exchanger part is uh, a zigzag here, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Comes back out down here, and then comes up a slight angle over to here. Now, you'll see I have my water heater elevated. Originally I had it sitting on the ground, and I had my pipe come down uh, along the floor here and then come back up over here. And I figured that the thermal siphoning would happen just by the hot pipes here and the water going up, that that'd be enough to circulate the water around. Uh, but I found that it didn't work. So what was happening was I was getting on my pressure gauge, the, the water temp would spike and it start getting really hot. But this pipe here wasn't getting hot. It was, it's, it's like it wasn't circulating the water around very well. It was just the heat was going up the pipe and not the water. So I raised it up and now I got a much better flow. This pipe is usually only a few degrees, like five, six degrees cooler than this pipe right here. So the reason why I believe that this needs to be higher than that is because the cold water comes down and it, it'll just kind of slowly come down here and come over to here and it just helps push the water through the system and then when it gets over here and it starts heating up that's also going to help push so uh, i think it's just part of the, the the whole thermal siphoning that you know the cold water needs to go down as well and to have less to come up so when i had it come down over and up it had a hard time sucking that water up so if it goes in a downward motion, it seems to have solved that issue. So down here, did the same thing, put a, t uh, a nipple on here to extend this out with a T. So my T goes this way with one that way. And then obviously I uh, screwed this guy into the end here and then put the valve on here. And then this is all copper pipe. I bought the flex stuff to do my radiuses here and same with up, up above. And then it's just a straight pipe over. Put a union here, a union here, and then there's also a union here and a union right here. So if I ever needed to take and, and dismantle it for whatever reason, needed to run the system without the uh, water heater sidearm on here, I could just simply take and disconnect the unions and shut the valves and then take it off of here. So as you can see, it's kind of a tight fit up here. I couldn't really take the water heater much higher than what I did. I would have liked to have gone a little bit higher, but again, I couldn't because of the restriction on the pipes that are already here. So you'll see back here, I put in this guy here, which you can actually get to it better from the other side, but 
This is a valve right here that I can turn to adjust the temperature. It's a uh, mixing valve. So the point of the mixer valve is that the water that comes out of it will never exceed the set temperature. So if you have it set at 120, the temperature is never gonna exceed 120 on the output. Even if the water heater tank has water that's 200 degrees in it, it'll never exceed that 120 mark. So that's a must, or you're gonna get in the shower and your normal setting that you normally have it set at might be too cold one day and then extremely hot the next day and burn you. So you gotta put this guy in. This one was the cheapest one that I found and it works really well and I'm, I'm happy with it. I'll put a link in the description below for that. So here is my heat exchanger on the inside panel of the fire pit. You'll see, or the wood stove, you'll see I put a, uh, I just took a half inch pipe here and I cut it down the middle, put half of it here because that's where it's rubbing on this. And then I do the same thing on this side. And I just did a little tack solder on there to uh, kind of hold it in place. Then over here, did a self tapper through the metal there and I just put the copper pipe here is just another little barrier did one there and then one here and then uh, there's there's pressure squeezing together and that just kind of helps hold them apart and gives me a better um, flow upward uh, by spreading that out now the wood stove is rocking pretty good we're running at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to be making some hot water here, boy. So with the current setup, it seems like it can handle one or two showers in a day. Beyond that, it, it's taxing it too much and it doesn't have enough heat reserve in the water heater to do more than that. So one thing I thought about doing is on my zigzag, heat exchanger, I thought about adding one more zigzag on there to give me more surface area for more heat transfer. That's something I'll probably do here uh, this week. And that should hopefully get me up there to the threshold I need to be at to have more than enough and not have to worry about running out of hot water. The, the purpose of me doing this video is to help show you what I did. I am by no means an expert at this. And you know, if you're gonna take on this project, you're doing it, do it at your own risk. Uh, and do your own research. I didn't find a whole lot of videos out there on this or any really much information at all. So that's why I just wanted to share with you what I found. The biggest thing that was the biggest takeaway that I had from my whole project was making sure that the out the drain the low part on the water heater was higher than the input on the wood stove, and that seemed to make the biggest difference. So if you can go more of a, a steeper slope than what I got going on there, you're gonna find that it's gonna circulate the water a little bit better than if you just have an inch or two difference. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I like to post a video every couple of days on different tips and tricks that I do around my homestead to help make things easier for us and get us one step closer to our goal of being self-sustaining on our own property. Thanks again for watching guys and look forward to seeing you in the next video.